Um, so, if you could turn with me to the book of Matthew, Matthew the twenty fourth chapter. Matthew, the 24th chapter. And we are going to look at verse 32 through 34. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch is already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. Yes. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for blessing us, keeping us, watching over us, protecting us from danger seen and unseen. God, we ask you right now, if there's anything unlike you in our hearts, expose it, reveal it, and remove it. Forgive us for any sin of omission, commission, or poor disposition, Father God, so that we can hear clearly from you what thus saith the Lord this morning, Father God. Open our eyes so that we behold the wondrous things within your law. Open our ears so that we can hear what the Spirit of God is saying, and open our hearts so that the seed of the word that is sown today finds good ground, takes root, brings about fruit at the appropriate time that your glory be reflected through everything that we say or do. Now hide me behind the cross and speak through lips of clay. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. These things we pray in the matchless name of our Lord, Savior, Redeemer, and King, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. 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 Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words, but my words, Jesus says, but my words will by no means pass away. Amen. So we just read an excerpt from the book of Matthew, the 24th chapters, and the Verses leading up to our focal passage consist of Jesus describing the events that would be leading up to his return. He was telling them about all the things that the world would experience and we would see leading up to the return of Christ. And I, I, I got, I'm, I'm just building a platform for what I really want to say to you in the second half, but I gotta, I gotta set the precedence right now. So y'all stick with me as, as we build the foundation. Right now, we're tilling the ground and, and we're putting the rebar and we're, we're solidifying the foundation so that when we get to what God really wants us to see today, we'll be standing on something solid. Amen? Amen. Amen. So Jesus begins to tell him all the things that they will experience. He tells them, Jesus, the word of God. He tells them that many will come in his name and many will be deceived by those who come in his name. He tells them that there will be wars and rumors of wars. Amen? Yeah. He tells them that nations will rise against nations. Y'all paying attention? Yeah. He tells them that famines and pestilence will be evident in the world. He tells them that there will be earthquakes all before he gets to telling them heaven and earth will pass away before my word fails. Y'all with me so far? Yeah. He tells them all of this will happen and this is just the beginning of sorrows. That's just the beginning. Then he goes on to tell him that the followers of Christ will be persecuted, martyred, and killed. Y'all calm down. I'm not, whatever y'all are thinking, I told y'all, we're just building a foundation. We're just building a foundation. Amen? But he said they will be persecuted, martyred, and killed. He said many will be hated because they claim the Lord Jesus Christ. He further describes the presence of false prophets, lawlessness, and the love of many people growing cold. That's what Jesus tells them. Yeah. All before he gets up to that point and say, and saying that heaven and earth will pass away, 
before my word fails. There's a lot of more stuff in there that's listed, but I think I gave you enough things to begin to move forward in building the foundation of what we really want to get to today. So, when you look at the list of things that Jesus gave the disciples over 2,000 years ago, before he said heaven and earth will fail before one part of my word fails, and when you look at it from the present day perspective, it's hard to deny that Jesus wasn't on point with everything he said that they would experience. Yes. Let's look around. Do we have false prophets? Yes. Do we have wars? Yes. Do we have rumors of wars? Yes. Do we have nations against nations? Yes. Do we have famines? Yes. Do we have sickness? Yes. Do we have people offended by the name of Jesus? Yes. Do we have earthquakes? Yes. Is there hate among people? Yes. Is there lawlessness? Yes. Have many people stopped loving one another? Yes. So Jesus said this. 2,000 years ago. And even though it has taken some time to manifest and materialize, it came to pass. Mm -hmm. Jesus called it accurately. Amen? Amen? Let's look at verse 35 now. Jesus says, heaven and earth. Ooh, Jesus. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. And we just took a small portion of his words to make an example to build a foundation upon, right? Jesus tells them his words will remain after heaven and earth Amen. all dissolve. Amen. So we have to understand that, and for those who've been joining in Bible study, you already get it. We have to understand that God. Let me, let me, before we go there, let me explain about God and, and the nature of God and the attributes of God. So God exists outside of time. Amen. Watch this. You'll get, you'll get smart today. God exists outside of time. In the very beginning, the first verse in the Bible, Genesis 1-1, it says, in the beginning, God created. Watch this. In the beginning states a time. Yeah. We have a beginning of church service. There is a beginning of the day. Yeah. There, is, there is a beginning of school. But before school starts, someone is there to ring the bell. Oh, so yeah. there's something that exists before school starts. Before we start worship service, we're here prior to. So the beginning states the start of a time. But before time existed, in the beginning, God created. So before in the beginning happened in Genesis 1 and 1, God was already there. So you have to understand that God existed before time existed in Stuff. I'm going somewhere, but you got to receive it. God exists outside of time. Amen. Right? Right? Amen. Right. God exists outside of time. That's why we can brag that he is the beginning and the end. He is Alpha and Omega. In the scriptures, he says, I am the Lord. I change not. Seasons change, but God remains the same. Thank you, God. Whew. There's actually an illustration in the Bible where God shows his ability to transcend the rules of time in the book of Joshua about the 10th chapter. Y'all don't have to turn there, but take notes if you want to look at it yourself. Chapter 12 and 13, where the Israelites were at war with the Amorites and they were trying to get away. And Joshua prayed. He said, God, just hold the sun in the sky and, and hold the moon in the valley so that we can destroy our enemies. And God did it. And nowadays, scientists try to say, well, what had really happened was it was an eclipse. No, no, no. An eclipse don't work like that because the sun was directly above his head according to geology. And the moon was all the way over yonder. And in order for, oh. hallelujah, in order for an eclipse, the sun and the moon have to line up. So man tries to rationalize what they don't want to understand. But this is what I believe. I believe that if God is all powerful and if God existed and if God spoke everything into existence in the beginning, that he's wise enough to stop everything without having everything destroyed. Yeah. He's just that type of powerful God. I don't have to understand how he did it to understand that he's able to do it. Yeah. There it is. So, because God is not affected by the rules of time, Amen. 
Somebody else's God may be affected mm -hmm. by the rules of time. But my God isn't affected by the rule of time. My God isn't affected by the rules of science. My God isn't impressed by physics. There is no expiration date on what he has decreed over your life. Amen. Y'all understand that? Just because it didn't happen when you thought it would happen doesn't mean God's word expires. Amen. Because God is not bound to our rules and time. He had women in the hundreds having babies in the Bible. Yes. He had men who should not have been able to produce children impregnating women in the Bible. Yes. He's not stuck or jammed in our timeline. Yes. He does what he wants, when he wants, how he wants, so that people can see his glory through what he has done. He says, heaven and earth will pass away before his word fails. Isaiah 55, 10 and 11 reads, that's Isaiah 55, verse 10 through 11. Just write it down if you take your notes. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, they don't return there, but they water the earth and make it bring forth and bud so that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Watch this, verse 11. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Basically, what that is saying is just like if it rains outside and you're going to get wet right. because that's what rain does, that God's word does what it's supposed to do. If God says something, it will accomplish what he said it will accomplish. He said, let it be, and then it was. He said, let it be fish, there was fish. He said, let it be birds, there was birds. He said, let it be lion, roar. He said, let it be, and then it was. God's word accomplishes what he said it will accomplish. So when God says it, we need to expect it. I want you to understand that God said it, Yes. We need to expect it. And that is what I really want to talk about today. Because yeah, right. that's the concern. If God has stated things about his people in the Bible, if God has decreed things concerning his people in the Bible, why do his people mm. question the things he says mm. so very, very much? Why do we always question everything that God says in his word, even though in his word he says his word will stand before heaven and earth pass? Why do we open the doorway for foolishness, false teaching, and fraudulent fellowship in our faith? Why do we do that? When God says what his word is and that it will clarify. Let me, let me clarify. Why is there so much speculation? Why is there so much interpretation? Why is there so much opinion when it comes to what we believe? Why are people, instead of taking the word for what it is, want to throw their spin on it? Well, I think what God says. Well, in my opinion... This is what I believe. Right. Instead of saying what God says is the truth. Straight no chaser. Why when we come to those questionable moments, those gray areas, do we not just simply say, for what does the Bible say? Right. If you needed to take something away from the day, take that away. What does the Bible say? Yes. What does the Bible say? Why do we not trust the word of God 100%. What does the Bible say? Well, one reason the Bible says this happens is that his people perish or because of the lack of knowledge. So we perish because we lack knowledge, right? Why do we lack knowledge? We lack knowledge because we do not study. Yeah. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, study the show that's... Let me, let me read it, because I want to read it from the Amplified. Here you go. 
2 Timothy 2.15, the Amplified. Study to do your best. That's a mouthful right there. That's a mouthful right there. Study to do your best. When I was in school, I'm going to get back to that scripture. Um, I didn't study to do my best. I studied just to stay eligible for sports. <laughs> That, there's a problem, but that's a problem because some people are pursuing their best. Some people are not pursuing their excellence. They're doing just enough to get by. Some people want to do just enough to get into heaven. All right, y'all don't want. I'm, I'm, I'm not going. I don't want to do that. Some want. Some want to do just enough. Oh. I, can I, can, to, to, to stay on the ministry team. Some people want to do just enough to get the title. Some people want to do just enough not to get put out of the church. Okay, let me take it away from church. Some people want to do just enough to keep their job. Some people want to do just enough not to get divorced but stay in that relationship. Some people want to do just enough mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not to disqualify themselves. How fast is too fast before you get pulled over by the police? How many miles over the limit can you go? What's the rule? The unspoken. What's the unspoken rule? Five. Ten. Five. Seven. <laughs> it's actually nine. <laughs> nine. Nine. Which, because once you get to ten, that's the higher level of a fine. When you're going ten miles over the limit, the fine is higher. Don't y'all all say, Pastor gave us permission to go nine miles over the limit. Don't do that. That's not what I'm telling you. I'm telling y'all because I done got a lot of speeding tickets. I, I, that's if we do not have a ticket paying ministry here at Alvin Shire. But 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 the point is we don't do our best to be excellent. We do enough just to get by. I said this last week, we don't stop at every stop sign. We roll through that stuff. We slow down. We don't. We don't. We don't do the full requirement. Y'all not. Don't don't say amen. Just say ouch. You know. Don't say amen. Say ouch. I know it's the truth. Cause like y'all got the right pass. I'm I'm just as guilty. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. But the amplifier says, study and do your best to present yourself to God approved. To who? No, no, to the pastor. You got to prove to the pastor, right? Then you got to prove to your mom. You got to prove to your dad. You got to prove to your boss. You got to prove to your coworkers. No. You got to prove to God that you're approved. A workman, it says here in my, transla my translation, and we're going to touch on that in a second, tested by trial. A workman tested by trial who has no reason to be ashamed accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. The problem is that we lack knowledge. We lack knowledge because we don't study to a letter to be better. We don't study to present ourselves we don't, as, as our very best so that we're not ashamed to stand because we know what we know. We don't study like that. So that's reason number one why we're always allowing compromise and speculation and opinions to get the better of us because we haven't taken the time to rightly divide where someone is feeding us garbage yeah. Mm -hmm. Or when someone is telling the truth. Mm -hmm. A lot of us spent a lot of time in ministries where we were just sitting there and because it was a church, we thought they were telling us the oh, truth. Right. But had we studied, we would know, yes. I don't need to be here. Yes. I got to get up out of here. Yes. Because we were ashamed, so we just took what they gave us. But when you can rightly divide the truth, you can get in that man of God, woman of God, and you can be like, but the Bible says. Right, yeah. And when they start telling you their opinion, you can go back and say, but what does the Bible say? Right. When you know what the Bible says, then it becomes your weapon. Hey, yeah. it becomes yeah. your sword. Then you can pull it out when someone is giving you false doctrine. Right. And you can say, but what does the Bible say? Yeah, right. yeah. Back up. Back up. Uh, I've got my sword. What does the Bible say? Back up. Uh, but we don't study. You can't know the truth when you have failed to study the truth. You can't say what the Bible says because you don't know because you haven't studied it. My niece was singing a song. I wanted to sing with her, but I didn't know the words. So I just had to kind of mm, catch you right behind her. Can't, can't, can't do that if you don't know what the words are. Can't tell somebody they're not living right when they like, how you know? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you got to study. You can say what the Bible says when you know what the Bible says. Secondly, a lot of us don't say what the Bible says because we don't trust what we know. I say that because if we trusted our actions, our actions will reflect that we trust what the Bible says. That scripture in 2 Timothy, the translation, I chose it for a reason because it says, tested by trial. If you trust, and listen, a faith that can't be tested is a faith that can't be trusted. So if you trust the word, then you have to allow the word to be tested. Yeah. When you have that moment where it is a Bible says issue, if you resort to carnal mechanisms, if you resort to carnal mentality, if you resort to your old ways, then you don't really trust what the Bible says. Yeah. You don't really believe what the Bible says. The book of James chapter 1. The book of James chapter 1, verse 22. It reads as follows. But prove yourselves doers of the word. Yeah. Actively and continually obeying God's precepts. And not merely listeners who hear the word but fail to internalize its meaning. Watch this. Deluding yourselves by unsound reasoning contrary to the truth. Do you know what happens when you begin to entertain opinions? Do you, when you begin to entertain speculation? When you begin to entertain people's doctrine instead of going, what does the Bible say? You begin to dilute yourself. Water down yourself. Yeah. You begin to lose. Do, do, you know what, do you know what happens when something is diluted? Yeah. Yeah. When something is diluted, it loses its potency. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if now, now, now to make it plain, it loses its strength. Ooh. It loses its power. It loses its huspah. Did I say that right? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I don't know about you. I need all my power. Yes. I need all my power. A lot of people lost their power over these ice storms that we've been having over these blizzards. And they don't know how to act when they lose their power. They still can post on social media, though, and let us know that they lost their power. But I'm not talking about that. But a lot of people lost their power. They didn't know what they were doing. And, and that's just electricity. That's just. But what if you lose your spiritual power? Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's, what, what if you lose your. What if, what, I mean, because a lot of people are there right now. Because they don't know what the Bible says. They don't trust what the Bible says. They entertain these outside sources and they wonder why they have no joy. They wonder why they have no peace. They wonder why they have no temperance. Yes. They wonder why they've lost their power. Yes. Amen. <sighs> become deluded because of the unsound reasoning that is entangled in the doctrine of the world. And James 2.14 is that scripture we all know that faith without works is dead. Dead, dead, dead. That's tragic. Think about that. That's tragic. Because when you think about faith, there's nothing about your understanding and my understanding of faith that should have any connection to death. Come on. When you think about faith, you don't think about a cemetery. When you think about faith, you don't think about dying. You don't think about skeletons. You don't think when you think about faith, you think about you think about that thing. You think about that variable that is able to make life. You think about that thing that is able to exceed possibility, that is able to expand your horizons and give you a new avenue or a new outlook. That's well, maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just what I think when I think about faith. But if you hang around me long enough, y'all start thinking about faith like that too. But death, faith without works is dead. Our behavior, our actions, our attitudes, our choices, our desires, our conversations, our communications, our cares, they reveal if you trust the Lord. Amen. They reveal if you believe and value what the Bible says. And that's number three. We don't value. We don't value what the Bible says. 
That's a, that, that, that's a hurt piece. Ouch. That's a hurt piece. You don't value what the Bible says. Think about something. You ain't got to tell me what it is. Think about something that you value. Maybe your children. Maybe your car. Maybe your house. Maybe your relationship. Something that you value. Amen. How do you treat Amen. that right. thing that you value? Amen. How do you treat it? Clean your car. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> spoil your man. Spoil your woman. Don't touch my pants. <laughs> you know, clean your house. <laughs> Keep your hands off my bacon. I value bacon. But there's a certain way you treat things that you value. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Even though this isn't biblical, this isn't biblical, this isn't biblical, I'd say three times. Yeah. But people we don't value, we treat them wrong. Yeah. And that's why I said it ain't biblical, because we're supposed to love everybody. Yeah. But people we don't value, we care less about. We dead thing. You know, we do stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> We do stuff like that. But the people you value, Keep close. you jump in front of a car for them, take a bullet for I'll, 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 you know, I'll let, what's that song? I'll lay on a grenade for y'all. I'll catch a grenade for y'all. I, 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 I tried, I tried. I tried. I tried. I, tried. I, 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 I tried. I, I heard it in the mall one day. I heard it in the mall. I, tried. I, tried. I was like, what? But I was like, that's heavy. Yeah. Like somebody love you that much that they'll catch a grenade for you? That's heavy. I could go right to Jesus. Jesus catch a grenade for old. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yo, oh, no, no, no. but 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 y'all get it. Y'all yeah. get the things that you value, you treat and you reverence yeah. a certain You're right. way. You're right. You do. And then when you think about that, now how do we treat what the Bible says? We know what I mean. We be like, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I know I should study my Bible, but the Bible should be our first, our last, our everything. Yes. Our first and our last, our everything. Listen, when we when we seek wisdom from everywhere else. Except the Bible. Mm -hmm. What does that say about what we believe about the Word of God? Why? When we ask our friends but that don't believe in God. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He got a PhD, but he's a Buddhist. I, 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 I got to do this so y'all see. And you're a Christian. But you think that's okay? That's not okay. And when God, listen, when God is your first, because a lot of times God hasn't been our first. God has been our last. Yeah. Yeah. We ask our friends. Yeah. We ask the professionals. We ask Jesus. Mm. And when all of those other things fell, I gave y'all a minute to catch it. <laughs> we ask Google. We sure do ask Google. Yes. Right yes. about now, y'all asking Siri and Alexa too. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, <laughs> Y'all are. Okay, y'all acting like y'all not, but I know y'all are. I see the little thing in your house. I see it. But um, and then when nobody else has the answer for you, Amen. what does that say about your respect and your priority of God in your life? Amen. When we make God our first, yeah. our last, and our everything, He you don't need nobody else. So when you make God your first, that's it. He automatically becomes your last by default. Yeah. Because he's the first one you tried. He was the only one you tried, so he was the last anyway. You got to make God your first, your last, your everything. Y'all know my favorite scripture. Seek ye. No, 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 no. That can't be right. Let me turn to it. It's got to say, seek ye the second. Or, you know, when all else, when, you know, like, like after you've done all you can, then stand. I should have been standing all along. Okay, let me stop messing with people record sales. Let me stop. I'm gonna stop, but, but for real, seek him first. Yeah. Yeah. Seek him first. Ask him. And, and, and the bottom line is it's just time to quit asking people that don't know God for advice and say to yourself, what does the Bible say? Yes. Y'all understand what I'm saying? It's time to stop accepting the opinions and instructions of other people who don't love God, have no desire to go to heaven, ain't trying to go to heaven, their opinion, and ask yourself, what does Amen. the Bible say? Right. Amen. 
it's time that we stop mixing the world with the word and ask yourself, what does the Bible say? If the Bible says you're more than a conqueror, stop walking around acting like you're defeated and believe what the Bible says. If the Bible says God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory, then stop trying to sin hustle, stop trying to sin grind, yeah. and your way to riches, your way to glory, your way to prosperity, stop trying to sin your way there and believe what the Bible says. Yeah. If the Bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made, stop looking for validation and approval by some man or some woman yeah. and believe what the Bible says. If yeah. the Bible was to say that God will never leave you or forsake you, yeah. stop Stop behaving like you're all alone and no one loves you and no one cares and believe what the Bible says. The Bible says, I will reap if I faint not. So when I get weary, I stand strong because I understand that even in weariness, I don't get weary in well-doing, then I will reap. So I don't give up. I keep fighting because I believe what the Bible says. When the world seems out of whack, when everything seems to be confusing, and I don't just shake my head, I don't just throw in the towel, I don't just shrug my shoulders, I trust in the Lord, and I lean not to my own understanding, and I believe what the Bible says. When my efforts and when my investments in people don't appear to be working like I think they should. I don't give up on them. Yeah. God says the increase is his responsibility. So I keep on sowing and I keep on cultivating and I keep on watering so that what I sow will grow and I believe what the Bible says. I pray because I believe what the Bible says. I worship because I believe what the Bible says. I serve because I believe what the Bible says. I'm passionate because I believe what the Bible says. I am motivated because I believe what the Bible says. I don't believe in the numbers of people that come through these doors. I don't believe in what the people tell me in the streets. I don't believe what every hater and every doubter tried to speak over my life. But I believe what the Bible says. We've been influenced too long by people. We've been influenced too long by politics. We've been influenced too long by society, by music, by news, by media, by peers. It's time for us to believe yeah. Yeah. what the Bible says. Amen. For in him yes. we live yes. and move yes. and have our being. Amen. It's time to believe what the Bible says. Yes. All eyes close, every head down. Mm -hmm. Father God, we thank you for thank this you, day, Jesus. God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. Hallelujah for Hallelujah. your word, God. We thank you for your Bible, God, because your holy Bible, God, so often it's been called the basic instructions before leaving earth, God. And if we would just believe and trust in your word, your word that will never fail, your word that before you said one dot in this book is proven to be false, that heaven and earth would collapse, God. Yes. Lord, help us so that we trust you. Yes. Lord, awaken us, Lord, that when we are beginning to veer off your path and your will, God, that there is a spiritual check inside of us that says, but what does the Bible say? Yeah. What does yeah. my word say? What is my will Hallelujah. for your life? What is my purpose for you? Hallelujah. Everything that we need is found in your word, Father God. Help us, Father God, so that we can hear what the Bible says. Help us, Father God, so that we can understand what the Bible says. Help us, Father God, so we will work what the Bible says. And help us, Lord, so that we will value what the Bible says, that the world will see living epistles. Hey, in your children. These things we pray in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.